Welcome back to GB Guns. This one's a bit different. I'm at the NRA Winning Center in New Mexico for the Ballistic Summit, hosted by Lucid Optics, as well as a number of other companies. I want to give you a quick rundown as to who is here, what they showed off. Don't worry, it's not just my face. I've got some B-roll for it. And give you an idea of what you can look forward to coming up in the future on the channel. Coming up next. On So here at the Ballistic Summit, it's pretty cool. Uh, the NRA Whitting Whittington Center, look it up if you hadn't heard of it, I hadn't myself, it is a massive, massive facility, world class, shooting for long range, for clays, for pistol. They've got a number of competitions going on this weekend while we're here. You might be hearing it in the background. Pretty cool facility. We got to stay in the competitor housing, which is kind of a dormitory type place where competitors would normally shoot. And the idea for this was a couple companies getting together with some media so we could have some quality time with them and their products and get a better feel for it. Here, Lucid Optics hosted, we also had APF, Retin 1, Firebird USA, Air Force Air Guns, Shaw Barrels, Wilson Arms, pretty good list. Some folks you might not have heard of before, some I hadn't heard of before, and that's what's kind of cool. So real quick, I'm gonna run down my notes on these guys and show you impressions from the event. Now, of course, anytime I go to an event like this, I get a light experience of the products, but not at my home range, not in my own testing format, you know, not, not the same level of hands-on as if when you've got it at home. So just kind of a quick overview of what this stuff's about and what we got to experience. Um, APF firearms, AR maker in 32 caliber across four platforms. Uh, they've got uh, a new elite line, which is where the upper and lower come from the same block of billet, which is pretty cool. Got to shoot 300 Winchester Magnum out of an AR and have it run. Um, six by Grendel, you name it, across 32 calibers, that's, that's quite a few options. So I think a pretty cool option for those of you who want to AR hunt, but in a different caliber obviously, or for fans of specific calibers, if you're looking for somebody to do an AR in it, chances are they've got it. Retin 1, something, this is a company that was new to me, they've got the WMT, Weapon Mounted Tourniquet. And as you see in this footage, the demonstration, it gives you a forward place to put the tourniquet so that you can sweep it out to toss it to a buddy while you're still remaining on target or at least have it somewhere forward and handy. Interesting bracket that protects the tourniquet all the way around. Nice and lightweight system. Tourniquet use we've covered uh, already past with other videos. They're a good thing to have around, especially with modern medicine, meaning that a tourniquet doesn't cost the person their limb per se, it might be just what they need to save their life. And this bracket can be mounted all kinds of different places, in the kitchen, underneath the dashboard of your car, you know, anywhere where having a trinket's handy, which is pretty much when you're alive, um, easy to mount, so super cool, smart, clever product there. Firebird USA has pretty cool targets. They are a not binary, it's alternative to not binary. It's a signaling device that gives you a flash and a boom of smoke to let you know you hit something. Keep the pucks with an adhesive back, so you just stick it to where you want to hit, and you get a nice confirmation of hitting the target. Loads of fun, I think. Good potential for training, especially if you think about precision shooting. Put a small target at distance, and you might hit the main target, but until you hit that firebird, you don't get the boom. Uh, I think it's also probably a pretty cool way to get youth involved or excited about things. I'm kind of tempted to stick one to the underside of a clay, throw it in the air and see what happens. We'll see. Uh, we'll have some of these on hand. They uh, are incendiary, I guess you could say, in nature, so you do have to think about fire hazards with things, but interesting, uh, neat thing that I've seen on YouTube, hadn't handled before today. They definitely know when you hit the target, but it's much safer and less destructive than, say, your binary targets. Air Force, air guns, we don't do much with air guns. It's only been in events like this that I've handled them, but this is not <laughs> your grandpa's pump action type thing. These are serious air guns running um, 3,625 PSI um, and generating up to 850 foot-pounds of energy, which those of you who know energy is 
more than your standard handgun round. Uh, these can be and are used successfully in hunting. Pretty serious things. 100% um, US made and since it's not a firearm it's not restricted or uh, regulated like a lot of firearms are and $15 for a box of 250 pellets it makes it a whole lot cheaper. There are some unique challenges that come with them, such as having a compressor strong enough to be able to fill your tank, that kind of thing, um, that if you want to get into them, I suggest you research it. I, it's not my knowledge base, so I don't feel appropriate really speaking to it. Next was shot barrels. I have owned a shot barrel in the past. In fact, it's the most accurate AR I've ever shot has a shot barrel. What I didn't know is that they'll pretty much make whatever barrel you want or need if you know, within reason of course and they even have a custom shop to do their own rifles or you can send in your action to get it rebarreled uh, something we are probably going to do with that old Remington 700 300 blackout it was never very accurate I'd like to see it accurate I trust shot barrels can do it but the company's over a hundred years old which is pretty cool um, they can do about 12,000 barrels a month and they know that because they have and this is part of the fun of an event like this is you may not have heard of shot barrels before but chances are you've shot one or seen one and just not known it because they OEM for a lot of folks uh, they can cover 180 calibers which is also pretty impressive if it's if you can think of it they can probably make a barrel for it Bilson Arms is another company I hadn't seen before they've got this really clever pivoting stock. When you're ready. Right. It fits any mil spec tube, still adjustable, so you put it on your carving stock or whatever, you can still adjust the length. You can also adjust height and positioning of the butt pad itself, but the unique part is that it pivots, and I think this has a lot of interesting application, changing the way we think about running drills and weapons handling with a carbine, in that because of the way it pivots, you can keep the gun in your shoulder. Now my initial thought was flashbacks to the urban rifle course at Thunder Ranch and all the awkward positions you have to shoot from and how this Pilsen arm stock would have let me still shoulder the rifle. Probably had a better shot and had better control of the gun. But as you'll see, and we'll do a follow-up video on this, um, it's got some interesting things that I really think could enhance tactics and are certainly going to enhance accuracy and weapons handling as this concept starts to spread more. And of course the host, Lucid Optics, you guys know them, we've run them for a couple years on the channel. Uh, from their red dots to the 4 to 16, 1 to 6 I've taken for long range things. Out here uh, we shot out to, well, I shot out to 1300 with it, some folks out to 2 grand. <laughs> but um, I'm, not a, a, I'm not a long range shooter and I don't claim to be, so 1300 is still pretty good. Um, Lucid Optics has updated their 1-6 um, with ED glass as well as the 4-16 so the scopes are even better than they were before and they've got some neat new things coming that I shouldn't quite talk about but I was able to get an answer to a question I've had and I know many of you have had about why blue illumination for the illuminated reticle and there were a couple of really valid points that I don't think anybody really thought of unless you're a scope designer Part of it is the wavelength is less exciting and less fatiguing on the eye. By exciting, I mean like your eye's physical response is calmer to blue than it is to red. So it has, it creates less eye fatigue over an extended period of time. And you get that more, that higher extended period of time because it takes less battery juice to run blue than it does to run red or green. So you end up with longer lasting batteries and illumination that you can leave on longer. I've had questions at times about the contrast of that blue against the target, but that all comes down to when you like to use illumination versus not. Some guys always want it on, some guys only want it on certain times. Uh, that kind of bit. As far as the scopes for long range application, which I've done before, did again here, they're super fine reticles that really when you've got a small target that's far out there you can still see the target it's not obstructed another part about those fine reticles and some of the gaps that are in there is by reducing how much reticle is on the scope more light is able to 
will pass through the scope, which explains part of how I've always been impressed at how bright the scopes feel and how clear the view is. Just think about it. If you've got a finger in front of your face, how much can you see? <laughs> Two fingers, a whole hand in front of your face, you're obstructing the light. And it's the same thing with the reticle in the glass. The less that's there, the more you can see. I hope this gave you guys an idea of what I got to do this week. I'm very fortunate to be able to be here get the time off work work to come out here and do this. Uh, each of these things we plan on covering in the future, so look for it in future videos. I'm curious to hear what questions you guys have about what we showed so far. Also, don't forget to check, check out gpgunsdepot.com where I'll have more in-depth, uh, deeper coverage of these things from this event and then in the future as we do dedicated reviews to individual products. That's, of course, where you'll find all your info. Thanks for watching.